I want to make a very profound statement is Donald Trump isn't our savior. No. Joe Biden isn't our savior. That's right. The, I, I don't want to get political here, but I, I want to make a very profound statement is Donald Trump isn't our savior. No. Joe Biden isn't our savior. That's right. The Democratic Party is not our savior, nor is the Republican Party. That's so true. Our savior. Our savior is Jesus Christ and God Almighty who sent his son and who says here, I've parted seas for you. Mm -hmm. I've I've let you walk across river beds on dry ground. Right. And I have literally walked through the fire and you never smelled of smoke. Right. Because of the power and the authority I'm willing to bring into your life. That's so good. But in order for that to happen, I'm inviting you to who I am, not just where I am, because you know what? We, we can we can show up at church every Sunday. Sure. We can skirt around the edges of the presence yeah. of God every day of our life. Right. You know, I have I have people who tell me all the time, man, I like being around you because you just make me feel close to Jesus. And I was like, well, quit using me for that and, and get close to Jesus yourself. Right. You know, you can have what I have. It Absolutely. wasn't it wasn't given just to me. It, it was given to everyone. And, and God made us in that image. And the process for us is to go from his image mm -hmm. all the way to his glory. That's and, good. and what that means and, and what Isaiah is saying to us here in this 43rd chapter is he's given us the means to move from what's in our backpack, what we were equipped with. Right. He's giving us the, the ability through the promises of God yet again mm -hmm. to move into the glory of God. That's good. And you see, a lot of us operate in, in the image area we're created. Right. We we've we've got the backpack. We've got we've got the goods, mm -hmm. but we're either not using them or we don't understand what they were intended for right. because we were never taught or equipped right, for good. it. And and so we're struggling trying to figure out how to glorify God because and you know our heart's desire is is that we want to glorify God. We want to be one of His children. We want to live like Him and for Him. Absolutely. But we're struggling with how. The how part. We're, we're struggling yeah. with the how part because in between being created in God's image and living for God's glory is us coming to an understanding of how. You know, one thing that I've one thing that I've learned over the years, and, and I'm not saying that I'm a pro at it, but, you know, if a person has a an area of their life that they're really struggling in, um, you know, prayer and fasting is one of the greatest ways to of get rid course. of stuff. And and Jesus it, told the disciples that's how that's how we do the things he did. Yes. And it's and so and, and it's like if we don't have prayer and fasting behind this walk, mm -hmm. what'd you what would you say? I licked my spoon and I realized I did it on camera, so I made a, <laughs> so I made a <laughs> well, face at him. Sorry, go ahead. You were on a good you were on no, something good. But, go. but no, it's just um when when you think about when you think about, you know, the prayer and fasting part, there have been things in my life that I never thought that I would ever be able to move past. Absolutely. I thought I'll never be able to move past this. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, what in the world? And then when you begin to pray and fast over it, it disappears. Yeah. It's 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 a supernatural just it disappears. Yeah. And it doesn't come back up. Yeah. And I, I know we've we've both lost our moms. Yes. And um and, and not saying that yours wasn't, but that was very traumatic for me. You know, I was an I was uh, I was an only child, and my mom, you know, wasn't married. Um, you know, she had me out of wedlock. I grew up not knowing my dad to this day. I couldn't tell you his name, uh -huh. and for 13 years, it was just the two of us. Wow. And you know, um, I saw my mom go through a lot of pain and a lot of struggle to always make sure that I had. Right. And to this day, I am extremely sympathetic towards single moms. And then, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not a weird thing or anything else like that, but it's just like, I get it. You know, I've, right. I've been that little boy or I've been that, you know, little girl that you're carrying around. And, and so I, I get it. I get your struggle. I might not know every detail, but I get it. And I'm, and I'm sympathetic towards it and so forth. And 
losing my mom was really hard for me. It's like what I'm saying right now for years, I could have, I couldn't have said it. I would have just choked up and, and, and not even been able to utter words. And, and I'm really just now over 15 years later. Has it been uh, that long? Losing, it's been that long. Can't wow. Believe it. Um, it's crazy. Over 15 years later, I'm just now stepping into a place probably within the last three or four years of, of really being able to deal with it and talk about it. And, and to your point, and that's where I'm going with this, to your point, I was coming to a place where where that emotion, you know, was, was controlling me to some extent. Right. And so I began to pray about it. <clears throat> and I began to fast about it. And <laughs> Miss Mile Mile that time. <laughs> <laughs> um and in in one of my in in one of my moments, you know, Satan was in one ear trying to say, Why would God do this to you? Right. And and in the other ear, God whispered this to me, um, through my spirit, and, and he whispered this to me and everything else. He says, You were never meant to live for your mom. Wow. You were meant to live for me. Yeah. That's really good. And, and you know, that's that's after years of, of ministry, pastoring, and everything else. I was still in a struggle. So, you know, don't don't think if you're out there, don't think we don't go through the same kind of things you go through. Sure. And and you know, so I was on fire for the Lord, all of these things, but this this was a thorn for me. And and it was something that I had difficulty moving past. But it was because I was so caught up in missing my mom and, you know, everything that would happen in the boys' lives, man, if mom were here or, or everything else like that. And and God had to remind me, you know, your mom was an incredible human being. She should be the wind beneath your wings here on earth. I get it. Put her on a high statue. She she deserves that and everything else. But you weren't created in her image wow. and you weren't created for her glory. You were created in mine and for mine. Yes. So let's, good. so let's get this done. Right. You know, and, and, you know, so everything, everywhere I thought I was mm -hmm. spiritually and scripturally right. just multiplied wow. because now my eyes and my heart and, and my emotions are, are behind me. And I am completely focused on the fact that, that I'm building for him and right. his glory and his kingdom and, and not my own. You know, you're exactly right when when you when it comes to that, and maybe there's somebody that's out there grieving that you know needs this. You know, it's been eight, it'll be eight years in in January with mine, and and I remember after she passed because hers was very fast. You know, yeah. it was just like within hours, and um, and I remember going back to the house and making breakfast for everybody. You know, that was there, and and it was just like I mean I can't explain it, and it wasn't like an emotional grieving. But it was like she I almost asked her for a paper towel. I felt her presence <laughs> sure. there, you know, yeah. and and, you know, you can say, well, no, you didn't. You were emotional. I'm telling you, I know what my mom felt like. You know, I know mm. her presence. You right. know? And then, you know, working on the funeral uh, down at the office at the house, you know, I felt her presence again. Lindsay sang one of the songs and I felt her presence then. And then I'm, I remember driving across the St. Albans Nitro Bridge on the way to her funeral. And I and I did the funeral. And, um, and on the way to Chad's up in, uh, up in Canal city and it was snowing, it was cold. It was January. It was just, just one of those cold days. And, and I remember the Lord spoke to me going across the, the, the bridge in St. Albans. Um, he said, I've allowed you to feel your mom's presence three times. He says, you'll never feel her presence again. Mm -hmm. He said, but I have a work for you to do. He says, you have to move on from this. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's almost like Jay that that God didn't really give me a huge opportunity to grieve, mm -hmm. and and so because His work is important. Yeah, you know your mom, my mom, they're in heaven, right? Okay, so oh, I wouldn't bring her back for anything. No, no. And and and, mm -hmm. and and this may sound cruel, but I hardly ever think of mom. Yeah. Every now and then, there's something, you know, I'll eat something that I'll think, mm, all that, you know. I, well, see, I was, I was that way. Right. You know, I, I had come to that place where, um, yeah, I, I didn't think about her. Yeah, I went through my day and everything else. You know, memories or something would come up or the something special in the boys' lives would happen. I'd be like, oh, right. man, mom would be so proud. Yeah. And, and moments like that, 
but that was it. But when I would, you know, when I would get tired, when I would get weak right. and everything else, the one thing Satan always wanted to dance in front of me was that void right. of, of not having mom right. and, and all of these things. And it, it came to a culmination for me. Mom always called me at 6.40 a.m. Yes, 6.40 this is 640. a.m. That's when I was born. <laughs> oh, um, was 6.40 a.m. On, on March the 5th. And she would always call me right. at that time. I would answer the phone, right. normally half asleep. And she, she would sing happy birthday to me. Wow. And so it was my birthday about four years ago. And I had just got to the office. And my phone rang. And I'm and I I had this momentary thought of that's mom, right? Because you know when the phone would ring on my birthday, I'd be like, no, sure, that's mom. You know, right. She's getting ready to sing happy birthday to me. And and when I went to pick up the phone, I realized it wasn't, of course, mom. Right. And I pick up the phone, and it's a client. I'm talking to the client the whole time. I'm talking to the client. These tears are streaming down my face because yeah. I had that that moment of uh, of you know um, loss. Right. And and um, and mourning, which is healthy. I'm you know I'm not oh, I'm not is. downing any. No, if you need to no. cry, cry. Absolutely. You know, if you need to mourn, mourn. That's that's healthy. Yeah. And and but what I'm saying is, if there was a thorn that Satan could hold over me, right? It was that. And so it was then that I really started focusing on praying. You know, why can't I move past this? Right. I know she's I know she's in heaven. I know things are good. I would not bring her from from Christ's presence for anything right. in in the in everything else. Why why do I still have these moments? Why why can't I move past this? Mm-hmm. And 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 Jesus and I came to that place and and what I'm saying is the the mourning and and the grief is healthy. Right. But what happens is when we allow it to be a stumbling block mm-hmm. to ourselves, it's not healthy. No. And and when we allow it to be a stumbling block to God's plan, for our life, it's not healthy, and I realized that. Right, and and so I began praying and asking about it, and that's when God said to me, He said, "You you you were never meant to wow. to build a life or live a life that glorified your mom." Wow. He said, "Now you can give her credit because you know I've I've used her in a big way in your life, right? And and it's okay to credit that. Yeah. But you were meant to bring me glory." Wow, that's so and great. and yeah. that's that's the goal here, and yeah. and that brings us into this this that's idea true. that if we are really going to come into that relationship with God, that is that is powerful, mm-hmm. and that is full of promise, that gives us um, kingdom authority over the things of this earth and of this life. The only way we're going to walk in that, and the only way we're going to start seeing the fruition of that is if we make this about him right. and we make this about his kingdom. That's he good. formed us in his image. Right. He equipped us in the womb. Right. And all he's asking is for us to put the stuff aside, mm-hmm. which besets us and drives mm-hmm. us in. And, and if you look throughout scripture, all of the examples were given from Moses to, to the disciples, even Mary, mm-hmm. Magdalene, and, and Mary, his mother. All sure. of these were at that place yeah. of of decision. You know, Moses, well, I'm I'm kinda happy here on the farm. Right. I'm I'm kinda <laughs> I got a I got a wife now. Everything's yeah, everything's I don't want to go back to Egypt. Right. Uh, this is pretty comfortable and, and I'll stay here. Yeah, yeah, no. No, you were made for my glory. You're you're gonna go to Egypt. Right. And and you know, you can kind of see Moses given that really yeah, you know, I've moved on. I think that and, about Lazarus. Yeah. yeah. Really, yeah. God? You yeah, have already died once. It's like, yeah, I really? Someone, I heard someone say once, that's why Jesus wept. He knew <laughs> what he was bringing Lazarus back from. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, I'd be hacked. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, but, you know, that's true. And, and um, you know, I'm, I, I enjoy the, the Chosen and yeah. that, that miniseries. And, and I think... You know they're um, working on the new one. I know they are. I'm excited. I, yeah. um, I hope they go... Someone said they're going to go all the way up to the crucifixion with it if, if they can get funded for it. I hope they go all the way to the axe. Oh, wow. Because so much of what they're doing right now is building the stories of the mm-hmm. disciples and where they came from and helping put 
put two and twos of scripture together to kind of understand right their background and, and their situation and and some of the stuff they've brought up i'm thinking where did they come up with that and then he explains it yeah. you know in, in the documentary he explains well this is why we depicted matthew this way scripture says this 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 and this and he pulls like you know 20 scriptures from all of these different places together and you're kind of like Oh, that's really yeah. good. And you look at Matthew like a germaphobe, yeah. kind of, you know, in, yeah. the, in the in the show. And it's like, yeah. I never thought about him that way. Right. And and Nicodemus is so powerful with the way they, they depict and portray that. Yeah. And um, I know, didn't like him his, at first. And well, I think I don't think we were supposed to. Yeah. I you didn't know, like him. I, think I they felt were, like it was a pushover, you know, yeah. to to the deacons. <laughs> yeah. And, to the and um, but we ultimately see what you're talking about. And in his moment of decision, right. And if you haven't watched it yet, I don't want to give it away too much because no, it's a powerful scene. I mean, people, oh, watch people, it. Oh, yeah. But but because it's a powerful moment when Nicodemus is that close, yeah, to 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 joining ranks and 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 going with Jesus, right? But chooses not to. Yeah. And and that that moment is extremely powerful in in the show, and so I I love it for that reason. Now, yeah, I I'll agree they've they've probably embellished this a little here and there and and mm-hmm. and whatever. But I mean that that is what it is. It tells it tells a really good story, and I think it gives us really great insight right to some of the things um you know that probably we didn't put the two and twos of scripture together on yeah, normally. So right. I think it does a really good job that way. But anyway, what I wanted to say about the chosen is um you know i'm I'm doing the devotional the little forty day devotional are you really? that comes with it it's just something personal I'm doing and um the very first one talks about Mary and I brought this up in the, in the message sunday and and to me it 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 takes this idea of image to glory for us mary we're not given a lot of background we don't know who mm-hmm. her parents were we don't know what her life was like or anything else. Right. All we know about her is probably all that was really known about her is that she was possessed, right. horribly possessed, right. and and scary, frightening. Yeah. Um, In the movie, yeah. And, and right. ultimately, ultimately someone that no one, including religious folk, wanted anything to do with. Right. Right? For sure. So she moved... From from that, still being created in God's image, mm-hmm. still being equipped, yeah, for, for with the bandwidth from what I said in the beginning to to carry out the glory of God, right? Somewhere in her life, all of this garbage entered in, and we don't know if it was by her own choices. We don't, you know, we you, you tend to think it, that it is, but it doesn't give us all of the details of how that came to be. But what we find is we find that she was as far away from him mm-hmm. as possible to, to the point that even the most, um, I'll say religious, because I don't know that I would call him spiritual, even the most religious could not contain or control her. Right. Kind of like you said, weak. Yeah. And and you know flimsy uh, as far as their spirituality goes, sure. and and so forth. Whereas Jesus comes upon her, he's not freaked out, he's not afraid, he's not, he doesn't run, he doesn't turn away, he doesn't pretend he doesn't see her. He just simply touches her, yeah, and changes her life, and everything else. So that evolves to where she follows him, stays with him, stays by his side. She's there at the cross when nobody other than his mom is there. Right. She and, was faithful all the way through. Faithful all the way through. To What's the grave. happening? What is happening? She's going from image to glory. Right. Right? And who does he appear to first? That's crazy. Mary. Mary. Yeah. Of everybody he could have appeared to, even his own mother. Yeah. Was Mary. Of everybody he could have appeared to first. Wow. He appeared appeared to Mary. And I love this. That's so the, good. the devotional says it like this. He appeared to her first and she got to tell the boys. <laughs> she got to she, she did. She got to announce it right. to the disciples. She got right. to announce it to everyone. Wow. He's alive. Come and see. He's alive. Right. Amen. And certainly they had built up enough faith in her because, I mean, she was discipled by him, you know. Oh, they dropped and ran. Yeah, Yeah, they did. They dropped and ran and dropped everything they were doing and and ran to to the tomb. And I think that is a great image 
for us, yeah. a biblical image for us to look and see if there is anyone who yeah. wasn't good enough for the glory of God. Right. It was Mary. Wow. But because of Jesus, because of deliverance, because of the ability to walk through the sea and the, and the ability for God to hold back waters and the ability to walk through the fire mm-hmm. and everything that, that God brought her through and brought her from. Right. That she walked as close to Jesus as she could. That's so good. And God used it for his glory right it wasn't just an image with mary anymore yeah it was about god's glory for mary from that point and that should tell people that are listening or watching today that no matter what you've done no matter what you've been into you know you know simon peter denied jesus but you know he was he pursued when when he was resurrected he pursued simon peter yeah you know, looking for him, you mm-hmm. know, and found him doing the same old thing like he was doing. But yet, when you think about Mary, and, and I've never really looked at that, you know, I, I just always saw, you know, you seem like you always where Mary was, Mary was. You mm-hmm. know, there's like they were always seemed to be together, right. you know, but but when you think about what he did for her, and then I'm sure in the community, you know, people think, you know, these little tiny small communities, they they knew her. Mm-hmm. You know, just like the woman at the well, they knew her. Sure. But yet he changed her and and changed her image into his. Yes. You know, to glory. Yeah. Like you're saying. And that's just a neat success story. Yeah. And if it can happen, like you already said, if it can happen to, to Mary and right. in Mary and, yeah. and around Mary, because, you know, we see that even those around her begin to to accept her and treat her different as she begins to show she's, she stepped out of, of, of what she once was. Right. And the same is true uh, of us. You know, I, um, I've worked with a lot of young people, um, over my life and and over my years of ministry, uh, a lot of teens. Um, and I love working with teens. Um, and the one thing that I've always seen them struggle with when they grab onto the image of God and they grab on to pursuing knowledge and pursuing instruction and, and pursuing the makeup, because that's one thing I always point them to. It's right. like, look, dude, you can look the part all day long, yeah. you know, but until this, until this word is living inside you right, and, and is manifesting itself inside you right. every day, yeah. it's just a look. It's just a look. It's an image. Until this is alive inside of you. So if you if you want to move in to the next place, then then right here. This is where it starts. It starts in the word uh of God because mm. one thing I have always found with teens is well no one respects me. Everyone thinks I'm too young. You know, kind of like a Timothy in right. scripture. Paul says, let no man despise your youth. Yeah. But he also tells him to give yourself to mastery right he that's doesn't true. just say walk around like a big shot right right let no man despise your youth that's not what he's saying he was saying give yourself to mastery give yourself to 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 the words and the scriptures yeah. and and the ideas that make up the image of god wow. and let them come alive in you that's so good and then you will exercise his glory Mm-hmm. And then everyone has to take a step back and realize that God's glory is manifesting itself. And, you know, you. and Hollywood doesn't help. You know, Hollywood doesn't help with the teens. And, no, you no. know, and, and mm-hmm. with what, you know, with what some of these, you know, it's like I feel personally that I can, I mean, it's like, I don't know how I can even relate to a teenager, you mm-hmm. know, because it's like they seem to go through things that we didn't even think about going through, right. you know, and then it's like things are different, you know, in a lot of ways, but you know, we have quite a few at the churches, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and they, they watch and listen and, and they're observing. Yeah. But like you say, you know, you said well, the look, I, I but think that's the image going to the glory. Yeah. But it's our image, right? It's our image. It's not God's image. Right. And, and when things come alive in us, 
It's when we choose God's image. Right. And we work for mastery, as Paul said. We work for mastery. Right. To to assume the image of God. Right. Rather than our own image. And then that's when when God manifests his glory over us. His image would be more important than what we would think of ourselves. You know, I, I think that, you know, being being in his image means we're Christ like. Mm hmm. And that means our actions are like his mm -hmm. and we're uh, our, our total... wants and our desires. Yeah. yeah. I, I told Christy last night I, we were we were watching the, the voice. We watch the voice. Mm -hmm. And um, and I told her, I said, uh, and, and we 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 actually went to that meeting and then we had dinner and then we had the prayer call. And and so I'm sitting there at dinner and I says, I said, can you imagine missing God's will? Because, you know, before I went to Mud Fork, we were going to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. You know, we were headed to North Carolina. We were, you know, I was already thinking that way. And, you know, we were trying to get the kids in school down there. And then I think, you know, would have things been different? How would they have been different if mm -hmm. we would have moved? You know, would we have these churches? Would we have, you know, all the things? Would, would, um, Lindsay have married who she who she has would John uh, be dating who he is who she she is and that other kind of thing and I think about that and it's like you know it, but you can't live life like mm -hmm. that you know with a bunch of what ifs you know but then there's times that you think okay you know is are you in God's will are you doing God's will is this what he wants and every time it seems like I go back to that, it's yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yes. But if you're in the center of it, instead of God being in the center of it, you can make a mess of stuff real quick. And I've done that before. Yeah, so have I. And so, you know, I want to encourage people that are listening and watching today that, you know, if you you still have a heartbeat, man, there's still hope. Yes. I mean, there is still hope. And, and just press towards, uh, you know, press towards the mark of the high calling of God. And, and press is a verb, which means there's action to it which means there is opposition. Mm -hmm. So opposition of, um, you know, when an airplane, uh, when the space shuttle or, uh, or a uh, you know, spacecraft comes back into the atmosphere, um, you know, there's, uh, there's a huge fire outside, you know, that happens. And it's coming into Earth's gravity. And, it's, and, and so when you think about that, what happens is um, there's friction. And so what happens with your life is that your flesh has friction with your spirit. Your spirit wants to lead you and guide you because God is in your spirit. But your flesh needs to be put into submission. Mm -hmm. And and until we get that flesh under submission, then we are going to make a mess of a lot of things. Yeah. And that's the hard part. But that's where fasting and, and praying comes in. Yes. You know, and to scripture. Do that. And the scripture. You know, yeah, you got to um, replace it with say yeah. if you if you're not eating then you got to replace it with something, and so you want the word, and you want you know, you just got to spend time in the word. Yeah, and and I think that's you know I, I spoke before about you know young young people, um, you know, and, and when I say that I'm even talking about the twenty somethings and 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 thirty somethings. Um, I I don't think necessarily they're getting all that they need to get from church today. You know, we're yeah. we're too busy for Sunday school or what, what we called it, you know, and, and it's been called a million different things since, um, you know, we're, we're, we're too busy for those things. Um, and, and we don't do, we don't do adequate Bible study. Yeah. You know, we do, we do good teaching, right. you know, Moses and the Red Sea. We do good teaching David and Goliath and everything else. But that was, that was one of the things that, that we've shared before yeah. is that, you know these these stories these things were written for our for our learning right that we might understand how god manifest himself into mm -hmm. man and right. does marvelous things on behalf of man or or well really on behalf of himself but through man right and and that's written for our learning most of us never even get past the idea that david slew goliath Right. Okay. Well, what did that what did that mean? Yeah. What did that mean for the nation of Israel? What did that mean for God? Right. Right. Because because that's there. 
That's sure. in the scripture. Yeah, that, you, that's there for teaching. You just blow past it, right? But what happens is we do really good teaching about David and Goliath, you know, to the little in the little kids' classes. Right. But we've got nothing in between that and the sanctuary anymore. Yeah, there's nothing in between that and the sanctuary anymore. Right. And and then we sit back and we wonder why why aren't these why isn't this younger generation getting it? Well, they're not taught. Right. And they're and they're not taught because people aren't striving for mastery. Right. To understand the depth of this word and, and what it means and how it impacts people's life. Because, you know, as, as ministers, our job is to do that so that we can help people move, mm-hmm. you know, from God's image to God's glory. Right. And, and if and if we're failing them by letting them get caught up mm-hmm. in, in a whole lot of self-image. Right. You know, it's like I, I tell the church all the time. They're probably sick of me hearing hearing me say it. But I hate this whole do you thing. Right. Right. That's not biblical. It's not. That's not biblical at all. That's that's no. the worst advice anyone could give you or you could give anyone. Just do you. No, you will screw things up. That's an agnostic do, statement. Absolutely. I mean, it big is. time. Do know? Jesus. Pursue yeah. Jesus. Seek seek Jesus. Strive for mastery. Yeah. And and I think that's just where we we're I was feeling. I was walking through Gasway one day and this is I think I shared this with you. I was walking through town and and I thought, you know, the church just isn't, isn't getting the teaching that it needs to get. And so then that's when we went back to we we put connect groups at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Jay, we don't get out to almost one thirty, one thirty on Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't do anything Sunday night, you right. know. And so, I mean, with church wise. So, you know, it's like 10 o'clock is the connect groups, which is kind of like a Sunday school for all ages. So they're getting the word now. And then yeah. they come. Then they come in about eleven thirty, or uh, you know, eleven fifteen, eleven thirty for church, and we don't get out till twelve thirty. Man, there's still people s- standing around talking, you know, at, past that, you know, yeah. and so, but it's important. And but then what? What you know? You think about this when you go to you see people that are that maybe weren't there for a couple weeks, but yet. You see what they're doing on Facebook and you know, with their children and this kind of thing, and I'm not against that. I think you right. should have time. Sure. But it's like okay, but because our children, are, you know, I mean, your your children were like our children. Sunday morning, Sunday night, yeah. Wednesday night. Jesus is first. Yeah, and everything it, else. Is you went to church, you know, but then you know when you start putting all these other things, you know, the the coronavirus is bad, and and I don't like it, and I do. Is it as bad as I th- that? They're making it out to be no. I think it's it's not. But there is, there is uh, things that we need to be careful with. But one thing that I can say that there is something good about it is that it changed the sports aspect of things, to where up in Braxton and and Calhoun and all that they're playing football and baseball and all this stuff on Wednesday night, and now they're not. Mm-hmm. You know. But the thing about it is the church isn't open. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so and it's like, but ours is. You know, we're not closing. Yeah, and but uh, I think you I think you make a great point, and and you know, um, in last week's message, not not this past week, but the week before, the one I slept through, and we didn't get to talk about, um, but okay. um, you know, I, I I kind of I talked about my boys yeah. a little bit, and you know, I I've been blessed with amazing. Yes, boys, they are. and and I can't say it enough. And and I would say that if they were someone, if they were your boys, I would say those are amazing boys. And I'm not, right. so I'm not just talking about it being that dad. But you're right; they but, are great, um, great boys. But I think a lot of that too is, you know, growing up as as a pastor's kid. Um, you know, and and when they were babies, we we pastored a church that was, you know, 35 minutes away. Right. You know, so we're getting up super early. We're getting there. We're not getting home till late. You know, we're doing all of these youth activities and everything else. Well, they were right there with us. Mm-hmm. You know, they were in the baby carrier and and on the, the little thing you wore where they could wear on your back. Oh, and, yeah. And, and different things. You know, we were we were doing all of those things. And so I think they grew up watching us right. make the hard choices. Right. They grew up watching us make the decisions every day mm-hmm. to do the God thing. Right. And not do the, you know, the self-pleasing thing or the, the worldly home. thing or the earthly thing or whatever. So when when they got older, and, and you know, I, I told my boys from the day they understood the English language, you know, I said, you know, hey, this is how it works with me. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, you keep trust here. Right. Your liberties are here. 
Yes. Your life will be great because right. you'll you'll get to do everything you want to do. That's so good. Right? Yeah. But as trust falls, right. your liberties are going to fall with it. Right. So you you decide that. You choose. Right. What what you get to do and what you don't get to do based on on the level with which I can trust you. Well, I've never not been able to trust my boys. They they got it. They bought into it. So and good. I've always been able to to trust my boys. So as they got into middle school, mm-hmm. I started I started taking hands off, you know, just to see know, what they would do. Kind of kind of like when they're starting to walk and you kind of let them go just a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's kind of in that moment with them and in, in middle school, you know, let's let's see how they react. Peer pressure's coming, all of these different things are coming. Let's let's see how they respond to it. Let's see how that Oh, they handled that great. Wow. So take the hands off a little bit more. Wow. They made the right decision there. Take the hands off a little bit more. To the point that when they got to high school, I don't do anything they want. Right. Go wherever they wanted to go or whatever because they had built a solid trust. And again and again and again, I saw them make the hard decisions. Yes. All the all the friends are doing this. Well, I don't really feel like that's where God is, so I'm going to do this. Wow. Even if I do it by myself. Right. And and I saw them make those decisions. I saw them spend a lot of lonely Friday and Saturday nights, you know, at the house with mom and dad. Right. Because all their peers were out doing things that weren't right acceptable to, to their you know, to their yeah. convictions. Yeah. And so forth. And we would talk about those things. Sometimes they would share, you know, well, this this is what's going on and this is what's going on. And I just don't want to be part of that and and everything else like that. And I would always remember saying inside of myself, you know, God's going to reward that. And I would tell them, you know, God's God sees this. Amen. God sees the choices you're making and he's going to reward that. Yeah, well, they've awesome. they've just entered a season where um, Luke's student teaching. Mm-hmm. He's just about to finish up his student teaching early, oh, wow. and and because awesome. of that, um, with 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 COVID, um, you know he's he's able to actually substitute. Really, um, as that's great. As some things are going on, and yeah, you know, he's got to meet certain requirements and, and different sure. things like that. So I mean, I'm not just saying they're, you know, right. they're they're throwing him into something, but but you know, there's there's certain steps that have to be taken, and it couldn't just happen overnight, and and blah blah. So it's all being done right. Sure, but this opportunity just came out of nowhere to mm. him. He didn't even know it existed wow. and it fell into his lap, you know, almost yeah. simultaneously, Isaac gets offered a job from a Christian friend, reaches out to me, asked me if I know anyone. I said, I'll see if my son's interested. He goes, he interviews and, and everything else gets offered, um, more wow. than, than not, not significantly more, but more than what they enter in. And he'll get a raise after his probation period is up and everything else like that, making, really good money for someone who's still in college and and everything granted it's part-time but but you know both have been blessed with really good situations and and i I told them both the other day i said all your life i've watched you make the hard decisions wow all of your life i've watched you put god first right when nobody else did that's so good i said so i want you to recognize Right. That you're you're walking through a season of blessing because because of you have always glorified God. Yeah. You have always brought glory. I'm not saying you're perfect. They're, you know, they're kids. They're not perfect. Right. But yeah. but they always made the tough decision to pursue his image and give him glory. And because of that, God has now taken them through a season of blessing now. And hopefully they they respond well to that and you know it's it's a little different guiding 20 somethings than it was guiding teenagers right but, but you know I, I bring that to their to their mind to their mind and and hope that they understand that it you know okay great these things are happening it's better be tithing yes better be tithing better be taking the next steps of of what god's expecting and using mm-hmm. that to support support nourish your family sure but also build the kingdom of god that's why you were given that you weren't given that for some earthly kingdom bullcrap. Right. You you were given that to glorify God. That's good. So continue walking in it. Yeah. And and He will continue to bless and He will continue to grow. And and these other the, these other things that you want, you know, yeah. houses, cars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that'll come. Right. As long as you continue to glorify God. Amen. 
Wow, and that's um, so good. you know, and and to me, it was a perfect example of something I've watched, you know, for twenty four and twenty one years. Right. I've watched them go from image to glory, right? Making the difficult choices, yes. and then see God reward and bless it. That's so and good. you know, as a dad, you know, I'm just like, yeah. Oh, but but no. you know, it, but as a pastor, because you know, I'm dad and pastor of those boys. Sure. But as a pastor, I can step back and be like, yeah. Yeah. That's that's how it works. And then think that's about done. think about what God thinks. Oh, and that's what you can't know. Can't imagine. That's yeah. just that's the awesome part. Yeah. Wow. Great study today. Isaiah forty three one Abba Father part four. You can catch all the other uh, the other parts on uh, YouTube as well as uh, Facebook. And then this broadcast, I'll have to upload it here shortly and then get that get that out to everybody. But it's uh, on uh, Google Play, Apple Podcast, and and uh, Spotify. So, uh, man, what an awesome opportunity just to share Jesus today. You want to pray? Yeah. Father, it is an awesome opportunity. And, uh, and God, while it's kind of out of our box, Lord, we recognize your, your spirit and your place in it. And so, Lord, yes, we, we ask that that you use the things that we've said and the things that we've shared, uh, just being real and, and personal and, and, and not, not bragging or, uh, or lifting ourselves up at all because we want you to receive all glory. Amen. We want you, Lord, to be lifted up and, and be glorified in this place. God, that's what you've called us to. You've called us to walk and live and, and think and, and, and do our, our life according to your image and according to your son, Jesus Christ, that you exampled before us so that, God, that ultimately we could bring you glory. Um, Lord, that's what Isaiah 43 shows us and teaches us. And, God, there's so much there that we didn't get to this morning that, that Lord, how when we, when we live like that and we walk like that, that, God, you will use us to call your children forth from the east and the west and, and the north and the south. And so, God, we pray that this broadcast goes out and touches lives. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that it goes out and, Lord, you, it, it reaches your sons and your daughters, Lord, who might be afar off. God, who've maybe made um, bad decisions or, or, or maybe just chosen sin uh, over your image. God, we pray that it goes out to them and, God, that it reaches them uh, in a place that, Lord, moves them back towards you and draws them into to relationship with you to where their spirit would bear image or would bear witness with yours and that, God, that they would begin to walk with you, Thank you Jesus, so that your so glory much. would manifest itself in their life. Bring power and dominion into them, dear Jesus, and, Lord, work in them through your promises and through your power that you've given us throughout Scripture. Lord, let us turn back to the Scriptures, and, God, let it, let it just be a hunger inside of us, Lord, to not just understand the the things that happen, but to understand the purpose and the reason for those things. And, and God, to see how you manifest yourself into your people for those things. For God, that's what you want out of us. Amen. That's where you're Thank calling you, us Jesus. to. And, and so, God, we, we want to understand that and have mastery of it, God, so that we can begin to walk. Uh, where you want us to walk, knowing that the fire won't burn us and knowing that the waters uh, won't won't stand against us, dear Jesus, but instead we'll walk across on the dry ground that Thank you've you, that you've authored before us. So, Lord, we just give you thanks. We give you praise and we pray that every word is said and used for your kingdom in Jesus name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming down here and preaching to me. Oh. I always, I always <laughs> appreciate. It. Well, I know yeah. I, I'm, I get it. too. It's like when you walk out of here, you think, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then you write that down. I mean, I take notes when you're down here, and uh, it's always it's always just pretty awesome. So uh, we'll do it next Wednesday. Yes, sir. Man, I tell you what, we're going to be at Thanksgiving before you know it. In a blink. It's just going to be that fast. Here, uh, another king and country as we leave today. Never give up. Yes. That song's for you today. Have a great day, everybody. Amen. Thanks for watching the Pulse WV Live in the morning.